everyone. <laughs> I like that saying A up. Um, right, uh, I've decided I'm going to do a walk today. So I'm going to walk from Oldham to Hollingwood. I've parked the car in Hollingwood. Um, but I wanted to tell you about something. Now, I read about this recently and I kept meaning to make a video. You see the bank top? The bank top, as you can see now, you've got the old co-op building which is now Mecca Bingo. King's Hall's over there. You've got the unicorn that used to be here, obviously the Grand Theatre. Uh, but this is really interesting. This is a pedestrian area you now. The only cars that are coming up here <coughs> excuse me, are uh, cars to go in the car park. And look at this, I mean this building, sorry about the wind today, I'm looking into a microphone, but this building is from the early 1800s, as usual I'll stick the info in. But look, it's on the corner of New Street and Foundry Street. And of course, they're not really streets in the senses, you know, with cars going past, but you know, at the front of this pub, which is obviously closed due to Corona, um, round here would have been cars going up and down. While we're here, let's just have a quick look at this door. Yes, yeah, so what I thought I'd do was drive down, as John Willie leaves this, drive down, uh, drive down, walk down Oldham Road, look at that door knocker. Like duck knocking doors. Hopefully, no one hears it and comes. I don't think there's anyone here either upstairs. Not going to be an opening door anyway, are they? Yeah, you see that as well? I'm not going to go over to it because I'm going to absolutely bloody everything. That's the old infirmary entrance and they've reused it to the front of the old, um, I think it's the new college, that, you know, a sixth form college. Now, for those of you that remember, this is. Um, Oh, we've got a tram going over there. This is where the Periquito, or to the older people like myself, at the Belgrade Hotel used to stand. Now it stood here for many years. And when they redeveloped the area for putting the tram in, uh, they built Court Funeral Care, which stands on the corner. Um, we're gonna make our way down this hill now. I'm gonna show you one of the oldest. It's not there anymore, uh, but a lot of people will remember it with fond memories. Before we get there, just before we get there, uh, interesting, you know. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's smoke coming out the top of the um, leisure centre, which suggests the eating's on. But I don't wonder why the eating would be on when it's COVID and it's closed down. Really odd that. Um, but anyway. Just over there is where the old oh look at that uh, is where the old Sainsbury's used to stand. I did a, a video recently where I actually go around the site and show you. That's on the corner of well what was on Bloom Street. But as we round this corner here, on the very corner of Slater Street and if this wind noise is bad I'm sorry I've actually got my hand in front of it trying to shield it so if it's really bad I'm sorry I'm trying my best but where that wagon's just gone past on the corner who remembers Shannon's pet shop it actually went round the corner and to the side uh, I think I've had goldfish from there when I was a kid you know what it's starting to bloody rain I'm gonna try and get across this road without being killed uh, yeah, they used to um, they used to sell everything, didn't they? Um, birds, fish, rabbits, cats, dogs. I don't actually know the year that they went. Oh, I can't believe it's raining. I didn't bring the brolly either. Um, don't worry, I'll just shield. I'll go under. I'll go under and, and film. But um, yeah, uh, now gone. I'll put an old picture of one that I found. But while we're here, I just wanted to show you this really old shop. So look at this shop connecting people. This will be one of the earliest mobile phone shops. It's got Motorola, Sony, Ericsson and Nokia, but look at them old 
signs and I think it was a was it a power broker prior, prior to that these houses by the way these are really old um, I'd say from the 1800s now the other thing who remembers the, the underpass so literally there where my finger is yeah about there I'd say you used to walk down and literally went right under the bypass and you used to come out the other side near the flat so we're going to walk across it anyway now you have to go across the crossroads um, they've actually realised it's, <laughs> it's not safe What is pretty cool about this crossroads is that probably for the first time in my life I've been able to get close to these concrete stands that are holding up the bypass. Now the bypass I think was put in, I think it was in this way, it's obviously set late 60s, early 70s I'd say. Um, in fact, you know what, it might have been earlier than that because I remember watching a program where some guys talking in the Civic Centre or possibly in where the Belgrade used to be and he um, you can see cars going past over the top and that was in the 60s so this street here that you can straight god what is wrong with me today so I think it's stopping raining so this building here these towers I actually did a, a video about these towers a few months back um, I actually managed to get in the flats before they locked them up um, if you want to look at that, have a look on my channel. Um, I'll put a thumb up so you know what it looks like. Uh, but yeah, these were supposed to be brought down in 2019. Or the planning request went in, I think, for them to do it in early 2020, sorry. But with the uh, onset of COVID, um, that basically put a stop to that. Um, I think there's a notice on the side. I'll go and have a look and see if they've updated it. Just trying to get across this bloody crossroads. Right, you know what? I think this area here is where, in fact, it 100% is 100%. So you see this area here. This is where the tunnel used to be, so they've, all they've done is just fill it in. But that was probably around about there was the exit of the tunnel and you'd come down here and there'd be a path that would take you, or would it bring you up this way? Can't remember now, but uh, I'm going to see if I can get into the estate, but I suspect it's probably locked. a report that I read I think it was it I think it was in the Oldham Cron because they started to report on this before they knocked everything down by the way how beautiful does that sky look stunning um, yeah anyway they uh, they reported on it and it's reported that each and each and every single person that was moved out of these houses here at the flats we're given around about six and a half thousand pounds in order to move. There was given obviously a new house, which you'd expect. Um, but yeah, they spent a lot of money getting people out of these houses. And the weird thing about it is, you know, if you think about it now, um, and I'm not saying this is wrong, by the way, I'm just saying think about it. You know, there's a housing shortage, people haven't got anywhere to live, you know, there's people on the streets. And about 10 years ago, maybe not even that, I spent a hell of a lot of money painting these buildings and putting new windows in to then just knock it down afterwards. It's really strange. And they, the weird thing about it is when they actually rebuild the houses, God knows how long they'll last before they get knocked down, but when they eventually do that, um, 
it'll, like, it'll house half or even quarter of what it would have housed prior. So I don't get it, but um, I suppose it's not for me to get, is it really? Crossbank house that. Number 27, no 25. Call. No response. The door actually is open. Uh, they can't lock it. But this will probably be the last time I ever film these places. I actually went in, by the way, if you are interested, I actually went inside these flats before they boarded them up. So, have a look. Right, let's get going. Oh, it's raining. Bloody hell. Uh, but yeah, they've utilised it. And then over here, we've got Mother Hubbard's now. The thing is, this was Mother Hubbard's back in the 80s. And then it became, I really I didn't like it. It was called Compose. And it used to really bug me because it was based on that fella from last of the summer wine and there's nothing against that fella but I didn't like him as a character I don't know why I think I don't think I liked his wellies anyway uh, then it closed down for years yeah thanks for that noise then it closed down for years and it reopened about two years ago and uh, I think it's like part of a chain now but I couldn't understand I mean, if you look at the newspaper it's all like, you know, famous Diana, the Beatles, Paul Quitts. And you know, I'm so, I'm so thick sometimes, me. Can be sharp one minute, well then it's, it's numb the next. And I didn't get onto it. Well, you used to get your chips in, in, in newspaper, didn't you? Uh, so yeah, that's the I Point Hotel over there on the top. So for the fire in 2012, but glad to say it is going to be refurbished. Uh, there is a specific use in mind, I believe. I think it's going to be a form of community centre for the people of the area. So yeah, that's really positive. And another building that actually is going to be saved in Oldham rather than levelled. down there everyone in the distance is Hartford Works now that's where the Flat Brothers made all the machinery and just over the top is the head office there that turret is the head office it's now been changed into uh, offices and then you've got Roundtree House I want to point to the top but bloody camera <laughs> right let's get down I want to show you the site of the old Werner fire station right everybody this is the we're not at the fire station yet but this is the old plow uh, if anyone remembers there up, to, up until it closed and it was a haunt for anybody who liked heavy metal uh, I spent many a night in here actually, drinking Newcastle Brown. That was a cool thing to drink back in the time. Uh, there's a staircase that goes down there. It takes you all the way down, there's the Platts building again, to what used to be the square, which is now the um, Werneth Medical Centre, I think it's called. But yeah, for anyone who remembers the plough, it's now Johnny's Grill. Right, I said I'd show you where, where the fire station used to be. That was knocked down. I'm going to say it was knocked down in the late 80s. I remember it being up. Um, and it stood just here. And it was a beautiful building. You'll be looking at the picture now because I've got a picture of it. Uh, it was a beautiful building, Victorian. 
I mean, I don't know why they knocked it down. I, you know, I asked this question on all my videos, why did they not come down, but they did. Um, I suppose it's a case of what they're going to use it for. Um, but yeah, we're at the fire station. Beautiful, beautiful building. Pretty good. Right, so, um, what did I want to tell you? Right, a couple of things that are going on with me at the moment. Um, you might, if you do watch all the videos all the way through. You might have seen in a couple of videos ago that I did up Green because I mentioned that I was looking to sell my house and buy another. Well, I've done something that actually is quite quite shocking really. In in light of what my hobby is, I'm actually going to be moving out of Oldham and I'm gonna tell you the reason why. Um <clears throat> I'll still be doing the Oldham videos and I'll be coming back to Oldham every weekend to see my mum and my mum my parents and um you know, see my family, because I'll be family live here. And I'm not moving that far. I'll tell you where I'm moving. Well, if all goes well, I'll tell you where I'm moving to. Um, the reason why I'm moving out of Oldham is just purely and simply financial. I mean, the house that I live in now, I've actually got it up for sale now. And um, I'm not going to say how much or where, because obviously I don't really think I should put that out there publicly, but um, there's a lot of interest in it. Um, I've actually got a ridiculous, I think I've got nine viewings, it's only been on the market a few days, I've got nine viewings next week, so I'm hoping it's going to sell quickly. I've actually got an offer on a beautiful, beautiful house that I went to see. That's Werneth Park, by the way. Uh, the house is over in, it's over Barnsley Way in Yorkshire, so you have to go over the wooded pass to get there, to come to Oldham, or up the M1 and then down the 62. Now, I've got a car, so it's not a problem. In terms of mileage, it's 30 miles from from there to here, from from there to Oldham. And to be perfectly honest with you, I sort of thought about it. I thought, why do I want to move out of Oldham? But the house that I bid on is beautiful. It's a stone cottage. Um, it's not very expensive. I'll tell you what I buy it for when I buy it. Obviously, it's all got to go through. Um, but it's got it's got views of the rolling hills. It's got attic space, which I can turn into an office for work. Um, I'm not a high flyer, <laughs> but I work from home and I need an office because of the job that I do. Um, and I can significantly, well this house first of all is beautiful, you walk in, it's got um, a big massive kitchen, big old, like old kitchen, not old fashioned, it's modern, but it looks old fashioned. A beautiful staircase that goes up. Um, and a gorgeous front room, two bedrooms. Um, and it's just delightful. In the front, you've got um, in the front you've got a beautiful, um, beautiful cottage. I can't tell you how nice it is. Listen, once it, once it all goes through, I'll tell you, and I'll show you pictures of it. And it's really nice. And the, the reason why I decided to do it is because one, it's going to be a lot cheaper for me to move into a better house. I, I think it's better. It's going to be cheaper for me to move into a better house. That's an old co-op, that by the way. Um, I can move into a better house and uh, my, my mortgage will go down to next to nothing um, which is which is why I'm doing it you know because not I, I haven't got an expensive mortgage anyway but with everything that we've all just been through with COVID I mean I'm I'm lucky I've you know I've got a job and I'm and I'm moving and I wanted to move and not have a mortgage but this is the second best thing so that is what I'm doing, so I'll keep you updated on that for anyone that's interested. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's keep going. I've got a house I want to show you down the road. Right, everybody. Can you see? You know, I don't like to focus on people's houses, but I don't know if they're doing this one up. But anyway, this house here, it's on Oldham Road, Manchester Road. Uh, interesting, actually. It's got the signage mark on the side. Now, this particular house used to be the local surgery. So it was actually owned 
It was actually owned by a Dr. Gill. Uh, now he was living back in this house in 1901. Um, I suspect that sign holder there may have held his business sign. I'm not too sure, but but anyway, he lived here with his wife. So he lived in the main house, which I'm going to say is this, and he had his. Uh, in fact, no, I'm lying. I don't know how old that ha that pit of the house is. If you look at it, no, actually, if you look at it compared to the brick, it all looks pretty similar. But anyway, he was in the house, and uh, that's where he lived, and he also had the surgery there. So that's where people would have come years ago to see Dr. Gill to get well. Have you noticed how I'm all about the good news in this video? Oh, well, there's a strange noise coming from a car over there. Anyway, we're now by the old Smut Inn. Uh, if you want to know the story behind the Smut Inn, go back to the video that I put on the channel, which is about the hill, pubs on the hill. Now, obviously, this isn't on the hill, but on my way back home, um, I passed this and I thought, you know what? I'm going to tell the story because it's delightful. I'm not going to tell it now. If you want to know, watch the video. Um, but the reason why I'm filming it today is because we've got a bit of an update on it. So the good news is that this is a building that's not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. They've actually changed it. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of work going on inside. And it's actually going to be a stonemason's uh, for grave gravestones um, and for me I just thought that's great because you know the business is going to be um, it's going to be another business opening up in the area obviously not the best of subjects gravestones but you know there is a need for them and um, great news that the building is going to be saved I don't know what they're going to do with the upstairs whether they're going to secure it and block it off or what's going to happen with that but maybe they're going to have it on a few floors that'd be really interesting and uh, I can't believe how close that Jodrell Bank was you know what I'm going to try and focus in on it once again because uh, it's actually a little bit clearer now and I'm going to try and steady it on this fence so let's see what we can do da, 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 da. famous Jodrell Bank. I wonder what it's looking at. Wow. Interesting. Trees are starting to spring. Look at the weeping willow and the beautiful daffodils. Daffodils are my favourite flowers. Well, them and uh, them and tulips. These trees, however, still need to spring into action but I'm sure they'll, uh, they'll get, the, get the act together anytime soon this looks like a fairly modern post box yeah it's an ER you know I'll encourage you to look at post boxes um, quite interesting to look at I saw one yesterday in Royton I had to go to uh, get an ear, earring test and um, yeah apparently my ear on my left isn't so great I can hear but it's not as it should be so I don't know what's going to happen there um, but anyway um, there's a post box there's post boxes everywhere you'll see Victoria VR on the front that's Victoria Rain I mean, if it, Queen Victoria died in 1901 so, and you know, that, that post box could be from like 1850s, you know, start of a rain even. But there was this particular one, and it was the Queen's Father's. But it was very, very ornate. There's one on Shaw Road, which is also the Queen's Father's, but it's in the same font as the one we've just seen of the Queen. So that bulky font, the modern font. 
Um, but yeah, this other one, very, very, very ornate. Bible mission. This is old. I'm just out of the way. Look, it's got all the windows blocked up and everything. Oh, sorry about this bloody wind noise. I know it's going to be really bad. This is the old part of the building. This is the new. Not so interesting, but... Oh my god, look, 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 look. That's interesting. This stone was laid by J.H. Kelshaw, Esquire of Sheffield, October 21st, 1893. Now, that doesn't mean to say he lives in Sheffield. There's a lot of people that came from Yorkshire to work in Oldham in that time. Um, I'll find out who he is. I will find out who he is. And he obviously built this mission. I'll tell you the story behind this pub coming up here. Can't remember what it's called. I will put the name in because I know what it is. I've got the info in the house, but it's called Nandini's now. And it's a it's a restaurant, not open at the moment, like everything else. The interesting story about this, and I'm gonna do a video on this subject. Um, I'm not gonna give the game away too much, but there was a murder back in the 1830s. Um, and it was a horrific murder. Um, the story is really sad um, in terms of how this person ended up getting murdered and, and why they got murdered. But the reason why I want to show you this building is because this building here is as old as that. It's early 1800s and it was a pub, but it was also used as a magistrate's court. And the people that carried out the murder here, uh, in uh, this particular story, it'll come up in a few videos, I'll do it soon. Um, they were tried for murder here and sentenced to death. Three local men were hung, hanged, hung, hanged, hung, I'm not too sure what the pronunciation is. Um, but yeah, very old, a very old building with a lot of history attached to it. Um, so I'll bring that video to you soon. I can smell curry. You know where I think I might go? <laughs> and if you've not tried it yet, you need to try it. Lodic chippy. Uh, it's not a chippy. Well, it is a chippy. They do chips. But they also do the most amazing curries. And you know what? The lads there, when I go in, I just say to them, just make me a curry. So if I fancy a mild curry, they'll do me a mild curry. If I want, and it doesn't matter whether it's chicken, beef, lamb, fish, anything i just basically i just say just do just do what you do for me i'm telling you now if you want to curry phone gladic chippy <laughs> and i'm i'm not sponsored by on they don't give me free curries to say that i pay happy to pay because the food is immense i'm just saying to you if you want a nice curry and i'm just not i'm not saying you're not going to get a nice curry from the place that you go to but if you want a nice curry something really authentic and that's the that's the point um, Glodic Chippy, and I think they're on Just Eat as well. Let them know that you've seen, uh, you've seen the uh, that, that I've told you about them. Really good lads. Like I said, they're not they're not paying me to say that. Um, yeah, hundred percent. It's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go there tonight and get my, get my tea now. I've decided. Um, 